Welcome our viewers to the first webinar of the Land Network, a community which brings together key leaders from the world's newest democracies with experts from past transition countries, with leaders that have successfully navigated the challenges of democratization. This is our first experiment with the webinar format. And if it's successful, we are planning to make such events regular in our community. My name is Attila Mong. I'm a journalist and media policy expert, a member of the LAN network. And I will moderate this debate, today's discussion, which is on Georgia and beyond. We will look at the country's presidential elections, which took place a couple of weeks ago in October. We will assess its significance and we'll try to analyze uh, it from a broader regional perspective, uh, especially from its lessons concerning the orderly transition of powers. We have two distinguished panelists uh, on this webinar. One of them is a former Hungarian parliamentarian, Mr. Matyas Örsi, who is now the Secretary General of the Parliamentary Forum of the Community of Democracies and a longtime expert on democratic transition. And he used to be the rapporteur on Georgia for more than 10 years for the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Hello, Matyas. Good evening, Attila. Thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, good afternoon, America. And I guess we have some viewers from Georgia. So, Gama Jobat, good night, Georgians. And our other panelist is uh, Mr. Rasto Kuzel, an international media analyst from uh, Slovakia. He's also a land expert advisor, a media analyst and expert with over 15 years of international experience. Since 1998, he has been the executive director of Memo 98, a media institution with extensive experience in delivering media monitoring on behalf of international institutions, as well as technical assistance to civil society groups and media. In 2008 and 2010, Rasto worked as a media expert with the OSC election observation mission to Georgia. And in 2011, he led a consortium that implemented a UNDP project focusing on media assistance to the public broadcaster, non-governmental organizations, and election administration in Georgia. He has also provided legal consultancy to a group of Georgian lawyers, media experts working on amendments to election and media related legislation. So he's a great expert on Georgia too. Hello, Rastel. Hello, Attila. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction. And thank you very much to the LAN Network for this debate. So before we start, some really quick words on how we will proceed. First, we will open the debate with two keynote speeches from our panelists, who will quickly, so in about three, four minutes, give us some introductory thoughts on what they think the significance of the Georgian presidential elections were and what are the main challenges for the country and the region. Then we will have a discussion between the panelists and me uh, for 15, 20 minutes. And at the end of the debate, we will uh, answer questions coming from our audience. So please do not hesitate to comment our discussion, ask questions. Uh, so we are really expecting uh, active participation from our viewers. So the Economist article gave a rather blunt assessment of uh, the Georgian presidential elections in a short article, saying that uh, the presidential elections were, quote, momentous and rather unexciting. Momentous because it marked the end of the nearly decade-long rule of Mikhail Saakashvili, uh, the outgoing president, and of the country's presidential system itself. And also unexciting because it was a rare case of an orderly transfer of power in the post-Soviet world. So, Matyas, do you agree with this uh, blunt assessment of The Economist? I, I, I don't disagree with this assessment but I would put the emphasis somewhere else. Uh, first of all, election, if it is, it, if it is non-exciting, it can be very good election. And sometimes very exciting elections can be problematic. I don't mean it as a rule. However, discussing the Georgian presidential elections, every important political event must be put into a political and to a historical context. And I would like to underscore this because I first visited Georgia Back in 1992, when still Gamsa Kurdia was the president, though he was in exile, the civil war in Georgia, 
Every night there were shootings on the street of Tbilisi, and it, and it ended with a presidential election with Shevardn as the former Soviet foreign minister and communist Georgian leader won. And he repeated his election that was quite a stolen election, a very fraudulent election, and he also wanted to cheat the third election, which was prevented by the national movement that was called the Rose Revolution. After Rose Revolution, Saakashvili was elected uh, first, and there was a snap election in 2008, if I remember well, and there was... All what I would like to say is that it has never, ever happened in the Georgian history, not only recent, but also in the more remote history, that any time any government would have been replaced peacefully through democratic elections. So it's a really momentous election because it was the first time it happened. And if you look around in the South Caucasus, not to mention the North Caucasus, which is Russia, you find no country at all where governments could have been or would have been replaced by the other ones through elections. Exceptions are Turkey and Ukraine, two neighbors, but they belong to different nations. And my last comment would be uh, on the uh, economist article is that democracy in Georgia, of course, is far from being perfect, although which democracy is perfect. But during the last 10 years, Georgia has gone through a very successful process of democratization in many fields. And I'm aware that many observers look at former President Saakashvili as an autocratic leader, but I would disagree with them. He's a strong leader, he made lots of mistakes, as we all did, but having said all of this, Mr. Saakashvili acknowledged his defeat, he even congratulated to Mr. Ivanishvili, he didn't refer to electoral fraud, he didn't call his supporters to the street to demonstrate against the results. And with this, I'm sure that Mr. Saakashvili and also Georgia fully regained its reputation as a genuine democratic country. Please remember that you cannot recall any similar event in Georgia or beyond anywhere. This is very important to be aware of these circumstances before, before we start discussing the details. So, Rustel, the word is yours. Do you also agree with this assessment, or at, do you agree with what Matyash said, that this is an individual experience for Georgia and, in fact, for the whole, I should say, post-Soviet region? First of all, <clears throat> I fully agree with Matyash's assessment that um, it is actually very good to see uh, to s such a calm election as, as we witnessed uh, on the 27th of October. I also think that uh, it is important maybe to, to, to try to analyze uh, the reasons why we had such a almost boring election. And I think uh, what, what Matej also mentioned uh, was, was this very important uh, signal, the ability of a loser to congratulate the winner. And in, 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 in this, I think we need to go back to 2010, when we had uh, a local election where uh, the first time in Georgian history we saw uh, the, 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 the losing candidate, who was uh, now the current, the incumbent Minister of Defense, Alasanya, congratulating uh, Ugulava uh, in his victory. So I think this was the first momentum, and then I would say uh, the 2012 elections were extremely important for, for Georgia and for the whole region. The situation was very polarized, unlike during this uh, last presidential election, and it was, there were clear signals that uh, there could be some, some, some problem after the elections in a way that uh, maybe one side would not accept the, the result, the outcome of elections. I think it was a great achievement and perhaps by conceding the defeat, Saakashvili probably managed to, to protect to some extent his legacy. Because uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think we would be able to, to properly analyze uh, and I don't think it's up to us. I think it will be the his historians who will who will be able to judge Saakashvili. Uh, but I would certainly agree with, with Matej that uh, there were very many 
important things that he did. In a many in many respects, I would say that he was a visionary, you know, and that he helped to move Georgia forward. But as he as he himself put it in in his in his uh, recent speech uh, for the uh, in front of the UN, there were also many mistakes uh, that were done during this uh, this process. And uh, again, I think uh, you know we 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 will have perhaps some time to to analyze some of these mistakes. Uh, to, 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 to cut it short and to, to, to sort of conclude, I think uh, what, what is important to see in Georgia is that uh, the democratic institutions has been gradually developing. This was uh, visible in, 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 in all elections and I was able to, to see all elections since 2008. Uh, and for me I see that there has been gradual uh, progress uh, certainly, there are still many remaining challenges, uh, and, and maybe we will have some time to discuss those as well. But uh, I think what Georgians were able to demonstrate, particularly in 2012, then was somehow confirmed in this in this presidential election. As I think is very important, not only for Georgia itself, but also for the whole region. So, uh, of course, these gestures and uh, these gestures of orderly transition are extremely important, but the important thing is how much do you think it is sustainable, this kind of atmosphere of orderly transition. Foreign Policy magazine said that this is the surpri surprising new normal for Georgia. The question is how sustainable do you think this new normal is? So can this be duplicated later on in other democratic, uh, after um, other democratic elections? For <clears throat> domestic and for foreign observers, it is very easy just to focus on communication and to say that it was a very good statement and we, and we would like to see continuation of those wonderful statements. But communication never exists itself. It is a part of the political atmosphere in the country. And Georgia is an extremely emotional country. Like in many of the countries in our neighborhood, there is lots of hatred going on. Uh, they really lack of trust towards each other. So I would say that on the short run, it is not sustainable because those emotions, they were certainly expressed in the campaign and before the campaign. You just cannot say that it's over. If a political force would say that now I hug my friend who yesterday was my enemy, then this politician or this political force would lose its credibility. Next time they cannot say anything else. So Georgia, as many other countries in a similar situation, of course is a hostage of its recent past, how the political parties were fighting against each other. Still, having said that, it is very important if politicians are able uh, to make those gestures. And I think Sakash really gave a good example for that. If you look at the cohabitation, it was very interesting, by the way, to see this cohabitation, which rarely exists in other countries. Uh, it lasted for a couple of months, and there were more conflicts than, in my opinion, they would have been necessary, but I think they managed quite well. I would say Sakash really very often provoked the, the majority with vetoes that maybe they were not that much necessary, but also I, I, I could have seen on the part of the majority to, pro, to propose bills and to adapt bills which they knew that the president will raise a veto. So of course in politics both parties are seeking for certain conflicts and I would say this cohabitation went relatively well and I would congratulate to both parts. Rasto, how, how much do you think that there could be no setback in this sense? So this, this learning process was important for both sides and is there is this such an experience that will hold on, that will stay them forever, or this will be part of the political culture, or do you think that there is a chance for a setback, of course? Well, the experience for, from well-established democracies shows that uh, there is always a, a very good chance for a setback, you know, and, and so I think in that sense uh, we, have to, we have to be realistic and we have to expect that uh, that you know uh, this 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 is quite quite possible. I mean that uh, 
that we could we could experience still some setback, and I would be actually surprised uh, to to to, to uh, not to see uh, some 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 problems. Uh, now, uh, talking very specifically, uh, for me, uh, when I look at the situation now, uh, we see that two very important leaders are leaving more or less at the same time. Uh, so. Uh, Saakashvili, uh, you know, finished as, 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 as a president, and then the Prime Minister Ivanishvili, who played an important role in, in this, in this uh, recent transition, uh, also announced that he's, he's stepping down. So I think the, 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 the very first ultimate uh, test of this, of this uh, system will be actually to see how this transition goes on. Uh, this, will be, this will be quite important. Second very important thing uh, is uh, to avoid uh, another extreme. You know, what we, what, we, what we saw in the last eight years was um, certainly uh, something close to one party rule. The, the Saakashvili party was able to be extremely dominant in, in the Georgian political landscape. And I think uh, it would be a mistake now uh, to go to another extreme and to make the the current ruling coalition uh, in, in a similar to, to put this uh, coalition in a similar position, so I think it would be very healthy for the democracy if the UNM uh, stays in opposition and if it's able to control uh, as as a, as, a, as a good constructive opposition what the what the government does. I think these two things are very important and the third one which basically uh, which which basically uh, is, is something that that uh, more or less uh, I'm very optimistic about is the is the civil society I think the problem in in some neighboring countries including Ukraine was that uh, the, the emergence of civil society uh, did not continue in the same speed and, and maybe more emphasis was put on, on different things but not on building demo democratic institutions. I think in that sense uh, Georgia is very strong at the moment. We also see that apart from civil society the media uh, environment has been uh, developing and has, has, been, has been sort of uh, getting uh, more autonomous in comparison to the, to the previous years. So my hope is that in order to avoid these setbacks, we need to focus still on these important things, and, and, and those are the, the three or four that I mentioned. Yeah, Rasto, you mentioned already some challenges with Georgia will have in the coming years. Uh, I would like to know whether Mahyash agrees with these challenges. So what are the main challenges for Georgia in the coming couple of, of years from this perspective, from the orderly democratic transition. If I may ask for your patience, I would like to come back to your previous question you posed to, to Rasto, because I find it very important. I, I think it's linked to, to this question which you posed to me as well. Um, it's very interesting, and, and you Attila, you yourself said that democracy is a learning process. It is very, very important to understand that very many observers see democracy as a set of institutions, a set of procedures, and when they are functioning well, <clears throat> the world is happy and they say democracy is improving. But democracy is a, is a learning process. And I don't think that Georgia will ever come back to this one-party system. And I would like to remind ourselves that Shevardnadze, Eduard Shevardnadze won presidential elections with 98% of the votes. Everybody believed that he will remain forever. And then Kim Saakashvili, he won elections, I think with 97, also 98% of the votes. And for the second, the snap election, it was also some 80% of the votes. And everybody believed that he continues to stay forever. And you see there's a change, which means that the Georgian society is learning something. And even today, the Georgia Dream Coalition has a very big majority. But now they have a viable opposition, which Georgian parliament has never had earlier. And I find it very important. And now I would like to come back to the setback. In my opinion, a setback is unavoidable. It's unavoidable because if we start to have a discussion what we mean under the term democracy, we all come to different conclusions that the three of us 
and then you have to speak with all Georgian people. I, I, I think it's not a surprise Attila is a Hungarian. I'm a Hungarian. In Hungary, we experience a setback of democracy. And I think one of the reasons is that many Hungarians had a different perception of, about democracy. I think that many Hungarians believed that when democracy will come, they will be able to replace a trophy car to a, to a Mercedes Benz car. And it could not have come, and of course there are many other factors as well, and people got frustrated and they would like to see something with a strong leader. There can be so many other factors in all other countries when people get disappointed, they would like to see a speedier development, especially economically, which is extremely difficult to deliver, and then there will be setbacks. I don't think that setback is a problem, because setback is also a way to learn that if a government dismounts checks and balances, and let's say it changes the electoral code for its own benefit, you name what the government can do, then the people will learn why it is detrimental for their future. And it will enforce future governments to, take, to, to get it back to the right track. So setbacks are not necessarily bad things because they are part of the learning process, which is absolutely vital that this democracy, what we are building, becomes our internal ownership. We have it because we are going through this process. Yes, so the question is uh, what can be done to uh, to make Georgia such a place where setbacks can happen, but the society can react in a such a way that the country goes back to a democratic transitional process. So what do you think are the main challenges for, for Georgia in the coming years? Uh, Matyash or Rasto, whoever yeah, wants to very speak. Very briefly, very briefly. Economy, economy, economy. Uh, if I may quote Bill Clinton, I think he was very much right. He said, democracy must deliver to the people. And the basic need of, of, of the people is better economic situation. Is Democracy is like oxygen. When you have it, you don't value it. When you don't have it, then you suffocate. <clears throat> so as long as there is a democracy in Georgia, they will not need a more democracy. They will have better living condition. And I think this will cause certain disappointments. Yes, I, I fully agree. Uh, economy is, is definitely very important. Uh, I would also link that with the, with the geopolitical situation because obviously we know that uh, there will be a very important summit on the 29th uh, of, 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 of November in Vilnius where Georgia is supposed to sign this uh, accession, accession agreement with the EU which I think will be very important. Uh, uh, they, sorry, they will study, uh, start the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the process. I think the, the association agreement is supposed to be signed in, in the spring next year. In any case, I think this will have very uh, very big impact on, on, on Georgia, particularly vis-a-vis -vis this geopolitical situation. What I have in mind is particularly the relationship with Russia and also the relationship with, uh, with, the, with the two uh, separatist uh, uh, you know, regions, which is South Ossetia and, and Abkhazia. Uh, where actually I think it, the economy is also uh, one one way how the situation could uh, could could be improved, uh, and I think this is something that uh, even Ishvili's government has tried to 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 to, to put some effort into. Um, secondly, I think what I have already mentioned, I think it will be important to see how the the the, the political uh, environment. Uh, we will be able to cope with this, with this, with this uh, recent, uh, recent stepping down of of of, of Saakashvili and also of, of Ivanishvili. So I think we will see in the next few weeks how uh, the you know how the how this political landscape will develop. I mean, if if it's if it's able to to develop in a more standard political environment, uh, whereby these two strong political parties could uh, could find the modus vivendi, could find the way how to how to coexist and and could find uh, their roles. I think this will be this will be very important. Another important thing is the reform of judiciary. I think this is something where the incumbent government has has really 
been uh, doing some important reforms, and and I think it will be crucial uh, to to continue in this in this speed. Uh, another reform is is certainly in the media environment, and here I think we speak mainly about. Uh, the reform of the public broadcaster, the reform of the whole regulatory system. Uh, so th these are just few uh, important challenges that I see in the in the in the next few weeks and months. Uh, and and uh, we we will see to what extent uh, <coughs> they will be able to, uh, to 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 cope with these uh, challenges. And we will also see to what extent uh, this could be. Uh, inspiratory for the rest of the region. Maybe just final sentence. I do believe that uh, certainly the situation in Georgia is really much better than in most of the former uh, post-Soviet countries and in that respect and in the respect of the democratic achievements indeed uh, there is uh, something that other countries could look at uh, while looking at Georgia. Yeah, so that's that's also one of the main questions on, of our discussions, and let's just broaden the debate a little bit more. Uh, what do you think worked in Georgia, which could work in other countries too? So, what is the main? What are the main components of this chemistry which in Georgia worked to to set up such an orderly transition, Matias? One of the miracle that President Saakashvili achieved that corruption was brought down from the top to below and I, I would really love to learn how he did that because he was really very successful in that even of course there were corruption scandals that always hit the government I think he was very successful uh, no matter why he did that but he changed the presidential system to a more parliamentary system and I am fully convinced that it will be very helpful for the future if any future leader in Georgia would like to show some autocratic tendencies, the parliamentary system will uh, provide a better, a better defense against those endeavors. Uh, Rusto mentioned the judicial system, reform of the judicial system, and it's difficult not to agree with him on this. However, it's a, almost a mission impossible. I, I, I was there during Shevardnadze, when the whole uh, whole judicial system and the, and, the, and the judges were really, really corrupt and incredible people. So Saakashvili started the judicial system. What can he do to reform the system? Appoint new judges. He sent lawyers abroad to Germany, to, to, to America, you name it. And when they got the good training, they were, they were appointed as judges. And then Saakashvili was criticized that these judges will be loyal to him. And I asked even him the question, so what is the answer? And he said that he appointed the judges for life term, which means that there is no reason for them, no rational, to be loyal for the government, because even if they rule against the government, they cannot lose their judge. And I think it was a rational argument, but still, Saakashvili was very, very heavily criticized by this. So very often, and this would be one of my conclusions, the international community um, very easily criticizes transition governments without being able to tell them what should they do, because I have never heard any better solution to this. And why the credibility of the judicial system is vitally important, and I would like to come just to point, highlight a little bit a, a, an imminent current political situation, selective justice. We all know that there are allegations of certain certain criminal cases that are politically motivated. Georgia, I would say, is not alone, or we, of course we know Ukraine and Yulia Tymoshenko being in jail, the result of selective justice. It's also a very difficult problem, because if the new regime decides that the old regime should be untouchable, then it's a so-called impunity syndrome, it's not permissible, but if if, if, if too many people are attacked by criminal cases, and I am aware of people whom I am absolutely certain that they are innocent and still brought to court, it also puts the government into a very, very bad situation. So my proposal to the government would be that, of course, they can start a legal procedure against government members of the previous 
previous government, but they have to be extremely careful to avoid the perception of the of this relative justice, and especially if the Georgian people can trust that the judicial system is professional and non-biased, then the truth will be revealed in the in the court system. That's why it is so important to have a reliable judicial system. <clears throat> Rasto, uh, so low corruption, strong parliamentary system, and a very independent uh, and careful judiciary. Do you think these are the components too of the success of the Georgian transition? By all means, I mean I I have to really strongly agree with uh, what Matthias just said uh, because uh, indeed selective justice is. Uh, is, is extremely problematic, you know, in any 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 system in under any circumstances. Uh, I think from this point of view, uh, let's let's look at uh, let's try to compare uh, the situation uh, in Ukraine after 2004 and in Georgia. Uh, I think what uh, what uh, what we saw in Ukraine was that um, despite the promises made by uh, then, uh, then President Yushchenko to bring uh, to justice some of the perpetrators of the Kuchma regime. Wow. Uh, this this has not uh, been achieved uh, by Yushchenko uh, for different reasons. I mean, I don't think we have time now to do a deep analysis of this. Uh, by contrast, uh, in Georgia, uh, this was also. Uh, something that Ivan Ishvili uh, promised, uh, you know, before before uh, he was elected to his position in 2012, that he would uh, go and he would try to bring to justice uh, those who, who who committed crimes under Saakashvili government. I, I fully agree with Matthias. Uh, it is extremely important that. Uh, that these uh, these these uh, lawsuits are not politically motivated. Of course, a good question is: Is it possible under the current uh, circumstances in 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 Georgia, uh, when we see that, of course, uh, at this stage, judi judiciary is not fully independent. So, on one hand, I would say I do agree that it is extremely important for people to see that there is no complete impunity. You know that politicians who make mistakes and, and officials who are in 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 positions uh, who commit crimes are brought to justice. I think this is very very important for people to see that uh, that these politicians do not live in some kind of isolated world that they could do anything and and you know uh, they will they will they will they will have impunity. At the same time, yes, uh, let's. Let's hope that uh, that uh, these uh, these lawsuits could really uh, proceed free of politics to the maximum point. Let's hope that uh, that you know these uh, people are uh, able to see uh, a, a just a just uh, judicial process. You know where they could make their points and and where the prosecutor has enough evidence. You know, to to bring them to that to justice. So I think I would fully agree that that this is this is something which 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 is very important uh, f for Georgia. After after the the, the Rose Revolution, I, after Saakashvili won election, I went to uh, a, a prison in Tbilisi, and there was a corridor on the left hand side. There was the former minister of education. Right hand side, the former minister of of transportation and the Minister of Economy, the half government was sitting there. And I made a public statement there that in Georgia, while you are in government, uh, you should improve the prison sy system because you never know when it will work for you. And it, 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 it appeared to be a visionary statement uh, because it really what you see that, I don't know whether too many or too little, but certainly quite a number of people are, are, are arrested, were arrested, and legal proceedings were started. As, as Lusto said, it can be fine, but under one condition. And this condition is that politicians should shut up on those procedures. And uh, Ivanishvili, and I think he regretted this once he made a statement that he will bring uh, Saakashvili to, to, to court, 
And Ivan Ishvili was the prime minister, you know, he stepped down, but the prime minister should not bring anybody to court. And, and, and those not wise enough statements undermine the credibility of those legal proceedings because the public can never believe that it is done because of the wish of the prime minister or it is done because the person really did something. And I think it would be a tremendous mistake if Saakashvili, if there would be a legal proceeding against Saakashvili. And just one, one more footnote, we don't need to go to Ukraine. Many government members of, this, of the Shevardnadze government were arrested, but Shevardnadze is still there, living there in peace, and nobody is touching them. And I would not put my arm into the fire that he's innocent. Well, I don't know how illu illusionary it is to say that politicians should shut up and then they would shut up and they would not uh, interfere with the judiciary. Let's hope that this is this will be the situation in Georgia because that's really very important. Although politicians like to use uh, okay. Okay. judiciary as a political arena. In France, there was legal proceedings against Chirac, against Sarkozy. I have never ever heard any politician, especially high-ranking politician, commenting or demanding anything. So it is possible. Yeah, one, one final question from me and then we will uh, try to answer some uh, questions from, uh, from the audience. What do you think are the lessons for other countries and also for the international community? How to help similar countries in similar situations? What elements should we focus on in development decisions? Uh, what systems or subsystems the uh, international community should develop in similar countries so that to have the same results? Rastel. If I, if I may start, uh, <clears throat> certainly as I have already mentioned, I think uh, in my view when we look at the situation in neighboring countries, uh, uh, even those countries that arguably uh, were at a certain stage were much further in, in their development. I mean, uh, again, mentioning the case of Ukraine uh, after, after the Orange Revolution, I think uh, what is very important, again, is to, to continue focusing on development of democratic institutions. This is, I think, very important in this transition process, not to switch to politicians, to individualities, but to, to remain focusing on, 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 on democratic institutions. And, and in that sense, I think Georgia really demonstrated that it's very strong. I mean, uh, even, even the, the, the incumbent government uh, is not in a position to ignore the very strong civil society uh, and, and you know uh, ironically uh, it is also uh, it is also the fact that that even Saakashvili uh, himself uh, you know came from 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 the civil society you know from from an NGO so uh, I think this is this is something which in my view uh, is, is one very important uh, element of 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 the of the democratic development in Georgia, that uh, the, 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 the development of civil society and in, in particular but also of, of other democratic institutions is, is one very important thing which in my view uh, could be very inspiratory for, for other neighboring countries. Uh, uh, the, the, second, the second thing I want to mention is um, the emerge, emergence or the ability of, uh, of of Georgian politicians to uh, the, the the fact that we mentioned this 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 sort of democratic tradition that has been already already uh, there uh, the ability uh, to, to 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 concede uh, the ability to accept uh, you know I think I think this is this is very important I mean that uh, that that the the parliament uh, works. As a real par parliament, you know, with uh, with 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 uh, coalition uh, on one side and the the opposition on the other side. So I think this this is another very important uh, thing, which which I think again, uh, when you look at the neighboring countries and when you look at the situation, let's say in, in those parliaments where you have a very strong, you know, one party, almost one party rule, with with not a serious opposition. I think, in that sense, uh, Georgia could could again uh, be some 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 example for the rest of the region. 
I understand what you said about the institutions, but also Matyash uh, emphasized the importance, in the Georgian case at least, of the personalities uh, who played such an important role in managing this uh, process. So Matyash, do you agree that institutions are which uh, every country and the international community should focus on, or also like helping leaders learn how to manage such uh, processes is also important. We, <clears throat> we agree that we go not only to Georgia, but also beyond. I don't know what the limits are, but I have been working in Northern African countries recently, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt. And uh, there are lots of problems over there, much more than Georgia. You cannot compare. But still, I, 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 am, I am very disappointed in reading uh, European and American newspapers saying that democracy is not working there because institutions are falling into part and of course we know what happened in Egypt and we know what see what's happening in Libya. But what I'm saying is that this is, why do we expect a country that lived under terrible dictatorship like Libya, for example, for decades, and after they become free, everything will be like 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 with Switzerland. Do we remember that Switzerland was the last country that introduced the women's right to vote in 75, 1975. Uh, so why are we so impatient with those countries? Answering your specific question, what the international community can do. In my political experiences, I have come across with two types of politicians. One type was that were democratic, but they made very many mistakes. And with those people, you can always have a dialogue. You never humiliate them. It's very easy to go to public and to, 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 to condemn them, what is good, but, but I don't think it is helpful. Uh, I personally had a very good relationship with Mikhail Saakashvili because he, he was listening to me and very often he didn't accept what I said, but many small reforms were achieved through a dialogue that, that, that we could, not only me, but many, many of us could convince him that things can be done better. And the other politicians who, who do not want to be Democrats. Uh, politicians who steal elections, I mean, oh dear, can go there and counsel me and tell how it should be improved, but they know why they steal elections. I mean, they do it deliberately. It is much more difficult, and to be honest, I don't know what to do with them. What the international community can, can do with Lukashenko? Nothing at all. What can we do with Aliyev? Nothing at all. So then I, I, I see more problems, but again, Countries, and Georgia used to be such a country where the politicians have been full with good wills in promoting, in, in developing democracy. I think we always have to be ready for a dialogue, but we should not behave as a teacher who tells what needs to be done, because our countries in the West and in Central Europe have been and still going through a process that our people learn. Uh, what needs to be achieved, and we cannot save these efforts from the Georgian people or from the Armenian people, but they also have to go through this process. Democracy cannot be done from abroad. If I may just very, very but, short. But to finish with this closing sentence, international community can help, can advise, can, can, can conduct dialogue, but this process should come from bottom up in the given country. Rasto? Just a very <clears throat> short comment, and, and then I think we will we will probably take questions from the audience. Um, certainly, I would say that uh, you need some uh, strong individualities to be agents of changes. You know, to to, to be able to uh, to certainly uh, to, to to play a very important role in certain periods uh, of transition, but at the same time you need to focus on institutions rather than on, on individualities. So you need these individualities, as Matthias mentioned, you know, uh, be it uh, the, the, the former president uh, or the prime minister, but, but I think what we, what we need to see is at certain stage really uh, if the transition should, should go on is to, to, to have a stable uh, democratic institution in place which will not be changed because of the change of the government. You know, I think this is, this is very important. 
Yeah, we have a really interesting question from, uh, from the audience uh, asking whether, in your opinion, the backlash of democracy in neighboring countries may have a negative impact on the Georgian case, since Georgia is geopolitically intertwined with uh, its neighboring countries and, of course, Russia and the, the whole region. So, Matyash, what do you think? Oh, absolutely it does. Um, we, are, we live in a global world and we are interlinked uh, with, 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 with even more remote countries. Our neighbors have a very direct impact of us. That is one of the wonderful things about European Union, that in the European Union, certain governments can do many tricks, many, many unnice things, but there are always a limit which they cannot step over. And uh, in a country like Georgia, which is, which is surrounded by non-democratic countries, and again, one exception is Turkey, which is relatively doing well, also, because they have also lots of problems. It has a bad impact on Georgia, uh, certainly. Um, if, if, if any future Georgian leader would feel that the democracy, democratic West is unable to do anything with its neighbors, with Azeri or Armenian leaders, and you can mention, of course, Putin, Russian leader, then they could think, why can I do the same thing? that I can continue without being sanctioned, without uh, any harm to us, so we provide, we can provide a very good sample and a very, very bad sample to each other. And one of the unfortunate, uh, unfortunate of Georgia is that it's surrounded mostly by countries which are not democratic and it is not helpful at all. Rasto? Yes, uh, it's certainly a, a two-way street. You know, on one hand, you can uh, you can share your good experience with uh, with countries that uh, are uh, currently lagging behind in 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 in, in these respects are are uh, certainly uh, not not developed in terms of uh, democratic institutions uh, and, and 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 at the same time of course uh, as Mateusz pointed out. Of course, it plays a role. I mean, it, 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 it has a big impact. I mean, just, just again, I mean, uh, look at Russia. I mean, Russia is historically the most important neighbor of, uh, of Georgia. So, uh, again, what, 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 what really happened in 2008 uh, has, has a tremendous impact uh, on, 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 on Georgia's geopolitical situation. And, and, uh, and the fact that... Um, you know that 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 uh, you have now these two, uh, two 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 regions, two separatist regions. You know that uh, are under Russian control. Of course, this has a big impact on what is happening in Georgia as well. So, in that sense, as we have already pointed out uh, during our discussion, uh, I think economy, economic stability, uh, the ability of uh, of, of the region to first really focus on economy and then on politics, I think, will be crucial if we want to see any sort of uh, any sort of uh, uh, any sort of decreasing of the tension in, in this particular respect. Rasto, Matyas, thank you really very very much for this debate. I, I enjoyed it very much. It was very thoughtful. I think a lot of interesting insights, not only for Georgians but I think for a lot of countries in transition and a lot of experts for in transition. So thank you very much and thank you for our patient audience for following this debate. If I may say farewell in Georgian, then then uh, Didi Madlova in Nakhvandis. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Take care.